Now, once you get your servers set up and you start to get your network in place, one of the first things you're going to be concerned with at that point is delegating administration. Because an enterprise network is going to require many different administrative tasks. Now, most organizations delegate various tasks to various administrators. Maybe they even have groups of administrators that can get quite involved. And a lot of different companies do it very differently. So you'll just have to check and see what the culture is around your place there. Now, Active Directory, make sure you grasp this aspect, is the foundation for administration in Windows Server 2012. When we're talking about delegating administration, we're talking about doing it through permissions, usually based on organizational units, and it can be based on sites. Sites can be tricky. Now, we're going to talk about Active Directory a fair amount in this course, a little bit later on, but we're not going to cover it too deeply. That is actually covered, I think, in the 70-411 uh, exam prep course, which you'll see from VTC a little bit later on. But for now, just understand Active Directory is the foundation for administration. Now, there are three administrative models that Microsoft likes to, you know, very neatly and cleanly divide this into. In the real world, sometimes it's not even this neat and clean, but these are the three you need to watch for on the exam. There's the centralized administration model, the distributed, and the mixed. Now, the centralized administration model. In this model, all the administration is controlled by one group. This group is usually all in the same location. All the servers are right there with them in that same location. And this is a very efficient model. Everybody's together. Everybody gets all the memos the same day. Everybody's on the same page. It's very easy to identify mistakes, all that sort of stuff. However, the centralized administration model usually doesn't match up with the real world. And I don't know if you've noticed it yet, but the real world will mess up a lot of things. Now, if you use the second type, the distributed administration model, this is really the exact opposite of the centralized model. Tasks get divided among various IT and even non-IT personnel in various locations, and administrative control gets granted to these people for very specific tasks. Now, this allows for the separation of workstation and server administration. Now, think about it. You have some pretty significantly important, potentially dangerous administrative functionalities that need to be done, like backups, restores, those sorts of things. But then you have those irritating type things that when people come in on Monday morning and they've forgotten their password. And so you get bombarded at 10 minutes after 8. You know, I forgot my password. My password's not working. Can you reset it? All that sort of stuff. Now, keep in mind what Microsoft likes about the distributed administration model is since we're spreading administrative rights out all over the place, it's very easy here to prevent any one administrator from being granted more rights than is absolutely necessary to do their job. And that's one of the main tenets of security. Now, obviously, this is more complex than the centralized model. But it's usually required by the organization's size and complexity. Now, the mixed administration model, you'll also hear this one called the hybrid, is quite simply a combination of the centralized and distributed delegation of administrative activities. Security policies and standards are defined and controlled from a single location. You kind of have this grandfatherly type group of people somewhere in that single location, and they're determining what the policies, what the standards are, what the operations. They may actually go out and train the other administrators on how to do things. And then the actual implementation is handled by administrators, usually out in a physical location. And so companies divide themselves up by state, by county, by region, by sales department, by whatever. But it usually is tied to some sort of physical location. And another thing that's really neat about this one, administrators cannot make changes outside their location. So it really helps you to identify weak spots, identify mistakes. Uh, it makes you uh, kind of quarantine mistakes into that single location. So first step, once you get everything installed, determine how you're going to delegate administration. And on the exam, just make sure you understand the difference between these three models and how to recognize them in a question and how to read one of those scenarios 
and determine which one of these administration models might work best for that particular scenario.